Good morning and welcome to <clears throat> Adventures in Awakening here in Blackstone, Virginia, uh, the center of the world, but then you too are at the center of the world. The title of this talk is The Fall of Reality. The Fall of Reality. I was just writing about this on Facebook, which is where I begin my day, uh, sparking an idea that I suddenly realized, oh, that's my talk. So what sparked this idea was the uh, realization that, here, that uh, at 84, and I'm still uh, uh, cognizant, let's put it that way, <laughs> that I have uh, 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 been alive during three evolutions of realities. Uh, three three uh, very, uh, you, you know, uh, like evolution, like dinosaurs and mammals or the Middle Ages and the modern world. Uh, well, the modern world has come to an end and now we're in the postmodern world. So uh, I, uh, what, is it, what was the modern world that is now dying, you see? So uh, I could see it in my own life. <clears throat> I grew up in the 40s <clears throat> on the living room floor listening to radio with a coloring book. And, you, and it, this was an oral tradition. I mean, this has been the basic... Uh, transmission of knowledge for mankind has been oral. Uh, Buddha taught orally, of uh, Jesus orally. There was nobody writing it down and putting it in the newspaper. You see, it was an oral tradition. And radio is the oral tradition. It's stories. But when you hear the story, you see, like the Lone Ranger, or the Shadow, or all of these radio stories, uh, the mind fills in the reality, and you can imagine the uh, Lone Ranger uh, on a horse riding whatever. In other words, you, you imagine the context, and the story comes directly to you in the bloodstream, you know, but there's an interaction there. All right, that was one reality. And then, uh, we didn't get TV until I was in seventh grade, I think. I remember seeing TV uh, I guess it was 1950, at a friend's house, one of these big old TVs with a little bitty screen. You had to put a magnifying glass in front of the screen. <laughs> Saw Howdy Doody, a Western with the uh, little the uh, guy with the white hat chasing the guy with the black hat and shooting infinite numbers of Indians, horses running back and forth. And a salad cutter. <laughs> Those are three things I remember. Howdy Doody, <clears throat> Westerns, and the latest salad color cutter that would chop up your veg vegetables like alchemy and transform a vegetable into salad or whatever. Uh, there's, Howdy Doody's gone. <laughs> the Westerns are gone, but the salad cutters are still here. <laughs> then came TV. Now TV descended down into the, you know, became the altar of the living room. Suddenly, uh, you know, radio, you can be anywhere, but TV, you had to be right there. And it was a passive relationship to TV. You didn't imagine anything. The TV did everything. There was no more interaction. It was a passive. You consume TV. And people would wait. We would wait until the show started in the evening and watch the, the little uh, signal, the, the, the uh, station signal. It might be a propeller or something. Sit there and watch it. <laughs> like being in a theater, waiting for a movie, waiting for the curtain to rise, you see. But it was a passive, rela a passive reality. And every day at the holy hour, you would watch in my family, there would, parents would mix a drink and watch the uh, local news at 6 and the national news at 6.30 and you could choose among the trinity of the three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. The only difference was the anchors. The news was the same. The world was the same. All 
there was no questioning about the reality of the world. It existed out there. And we all saw the same world. Nobody questioned it, you see. It was a monolithic world. It was not fallen. It was believed in. So you believed in the news. The news happened and you trust the government and you trusted the anchors. And there was a trust relationship with the world. You know, it's like, like a, a marriage. You know, you trust your partner or your boss. You trust your company. You know, there was trust, you see. Uh, and that gave security. Everybody knew where they were, even if you were bad off, uh, you knew what was real, you see. So there was a, a trust, a trust, you see. But then came the 60s, and the trust was broken with the world. First there was the assassinations, JFK, RFK, Martin Luther, Everybody's hero got assassinated. <laughs> and then there was Nixon and broke the trust of the government. Couldn't even trust the president, you see. And then there was a Vietnam War. And that split the trust, you see. Either you went to war uh, and trusted the government or you went to Canada. Or you got a war protest. You protested the government. And that split. So the 60s broke the trust in reality. So reality fell. And, and, uh, uh, and since then, we've been looking at the world as a Picasso, mirror, a Picasso painting. You know, Picasso painting of a woman or something. It's all pieces of fragments. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Everything's broken. Reality's broken. But you have to have reality. You have to trust something. Otherwise, you're in, a, in kind of a suspended psychosis alone. Unless you can trust something, you're, you're threatened by madness. There's a, there's a threat of oblivion there, of falling into the abyss of non-existence. So we cling to something. We hold on to something. Something's got to be real. See? So when the mirror is broken, we pick out a fragment. If you, I'll post a picture of a Picasso painting, but we'll pick out the eye. <laughs> See, you know what a Picasso is like. Everything, it's pieces of the mirror put together in, in a disjointed, disconnected way. Every, the, 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 womb, the form of the woman is there, but it's just all different. One eye is looking this way. It's like, like me, I got a walleye when I... <laughs> When I look to the left, you see, I have two. You know, so it's like that, you know. When I look to the right, I see one. When I look to the left, I see two, which is real. So the, the face of reality broke with the 60s. And now, since we have to have something to cling to, we'll pick out a piece. I got this eye, you got that eye, I got that lip, you got that lip, you see, and everybody's got a piece. And then you get people to agree with and join your piece so it gets bigger. Hopefully it'll get big enough to put the reality back together again, where there's only one face. So we want to find that one face, you see, restore the mirror, restore reality, we've fallen. Restore it, you see, even Trump ran on that, restore the face of America. So there's just one America, not this two, not this many Americas, you see. We can't stand that. There's got to be one. So how do you get to be the one? Well, the, the, the way of Trump is to destroy all the other faces. <laughs> so, I mean, that was Hitler's pattern, too, you know, unite Germany by destroying all the um, alien or impurities. Get that mirror face clean of all the warts have have plastic surgery botox <laughs> make the face one you see so can you can you get a little overview here and so now with the with the uh, fragmentation of reality in the 60s you had the fragmentation of the networks cable tv now you could get different you could choose different viewpoints of reality 
with the three networks, there was no choice of realities. You could just choose the anchor. And each news had a little slant on reality. But it was all the same factual basis. Nobody questioned that. So with cable came, with the fragmentation of reality in the 60s, came cable, for instance, which allowed you to choose a piece of reality and believe that was the whole reality, you see. You choose an eye of reality and believe that one eye is the whole face and all the other faces, pieces of reality, pieces of the Picasso painting, are false. They don't, they're, they're illusion. They're wrong, you see. It's, it's the devil or it's, you know, whatever, but it's not real. Only my fragment is real. The piece of the mirror that I choose is real. So it's my destiny, my mission, my purpose to get rid of these false pieces and restore the Picasso painting, you see? I mean, this is our nature. We have to do this, but we seem to be doing it in the wrong way <laughs> or we're not going far enough, you see? So with, with, the, uh, with cable breaking up the networks, along comes the internet and now social media, which is interactive. It's no, you know, internet is not passive. You don't sit there and just consume the internet. You play with it, you interact with it, you create it. So now even the news is being created. It used to be, well, only a professional reporter could report the news and that news had to be delivered through a professional system like a network you know I mean it was a big thing you know and now anybody with a smartphone can be a reporter and capture the news and put it on YouTube and it goes viral and everybody watches it and even the news will put it on there <laughs> you can become famous you see the, l the little girl that uh, videoed uh, the Floyd, uh, George Floyd being uh, choked together became, created the whole Black Lives Movement. You know, because she was able to photograph, videoed the actual choking instead of just getting the police report on the evening news, you see. So there's a bypassing of the Broken, you know, when you, when you, the distrust of the, the distrust of reality that happened in the 60s is being bypassed to form a new trust, you see. So now the new trust is basically what you choose to trust. Back in the 60s, before the 60s, in the 50s, you couldn't choose which reality to trust. Oh, there were a few early six beatniks were the first one to question the objective reality of the culture. They were the first ones to question the fishbowl. But then in the 60s, it cracked open. And now we can only trust pieces of reality, you know. And that one, then what we trust is what we choose to trust. So, if I choose to trust the anti-vaccination movement uh, and, and whoever's putting that, you see, well, then that becomes real and the rest of the face of the Picasso painting is not real. So you've got this conflict between my reality, what I believe in, what I choose to trust, and everyone else. But there is no overriding trust, you see. It's all what I choose to trust and invest in and stake my soul on, really. I mean, people stake their identity in what they, in the fragment of the Picasso painting that they trust to be the whole picture, you see? That's a good metaphor to work with. Uh, Picasso really had it. <laughs> he was painting what the modern world looks like, a broken mirror of fragments, you see. And we're looking for the whole. We're looking for the one that we can trust by picking fragments. So where is the one? And this is where we're really, <laughs> for me, you know, I mean, I, I practice Zen Buddhism. 
I'm not a Buddhist and I'm not a Zen Buddhist, but I practice seeing the whole. I practice awakening. I practice transcending the fragments. I practice seeing the whole Picasso. Now, where is the whole Picasso painting? You look at the painting on the wall, it's all a bunch of dist. There's a f form. You know it's a woman or whatever. You know it's a form, but it's all disjointed pieces. Where is the one? You are the one. Picasso is the one. So if you see the one in a Picasso painting, you are seeing through the eyes of Picasso. You are painting that painting as he painted it. Now, this doesn't fit our reality map, but this is the, the Zen Buddhist way of viewing, you see. You are the one. Only you can put the pieces back together. Only you can trust the whole, but when the world is fragmented, you have to discover the whole, not by picking one of the pieces and investing in that. That's an illusion, you see. Whatever piece of the Picasso painting you choose to believe is the whole piece, that is just an appearance that you believe in. It's not the whole. So where is the whole? If you can't perceive it, if everything is broken, where is the whole? But you know the whole exists. You know reality exists. I mean, you're watching this. You exist. That's real. Nobody can convince you or persuade you that you're not watching this. You're watching this like as if you were Picasso. So you are Picasso, metaphorically speaking looking at the fragmented world, but you're whole. You may look at the world and see fragments. I look at this room as a, you know, there's a picture there, there's a lamp there, there's a chair, there's, there's a Buddha there. All these are fragments, you see. What puts it together? I put it together. My seeing it puts it, my knowing it puts together. You see? You create reality by knowing it. But if you believe that the world is fragmented, like a Picasso painting, then you are fragmented and you are wounded and you now desperately find the whole and you will find it by picking out a fragment of the Picasso painting and saying that's the whole painting. But you know in this room you can't pick out anything in this room and say oh that is the whole room. That little Buddha there is the one room, is the one. No, I look around and see all these other things you see. So this is really a Picasso painting, this external room I'm looking at, but it's made whole by me. I make it whole by knowing it, you see. So everything is made whole by my knowing it, but how do I know it? How do I know it, you see? So this Picasso, you know, it's kind of like a metaphor. It's if you see the world through Picasso's eyes, you see one world. But through his art, he is showing you the way the modern world looks. It's fragmented. The assassinations, the distrust in the president, uh, science got corrupted because it sold you cigarettes, the doctor smokes. <laughs> you know, so science got corrupted, you know, everything has fallen. Who's putting it back together again? You have to put it back together again. The world's not going to put itself back together again. You have some now the responsibility is on you. You see? And that's 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 Zen. The responsibility is on you because you are the creator of the world you see. And you are whole. You're already always whole as the knower of the world. You don't see the world as a Picasso painting, you see it as one room. It all puts together because that's the way I see it, you see. So you are the source. You are the whole. You are Picasso. <laughs>
You are not fallen. You are not fallen. Think about that. Thanks for dropping in.